so now here we are at the entrance to Pyrewood Garden. place where the three pioneers of Roman archaeology in Scotland um, would have lived. I'm not sure. But let's go and see. Please do not pick any of the fruit off the trees. Admission is complimentary. All donations are gratefully accepted and support maintaining Scotland's precious heritage. Welcome to Priorwood Garden, a tranquil oasis nestled beneath the Iden Hills. Um, I'm Scottish and I don't know if I pronounced that right. I've noticed this word Aidan or Aidan <coughs> um, quite a lot. The station at Tweed Bank is called Aidan View. Um, so it's obviously a meaningful sort of Celtic name for around here. I will need to find out its meaning so that I can um, like profess to know what I'm talking about. Oh, this looks so cool. And there's nobody here, which is perfect. Oh, wow. Oh, actually, there are people. I can hear voices. We will try and avoid them. Oh, they're having a picnic. Oh, this is so pretty. It's like a beautiful little oasis with a butterfly. Lots of butterflies. Oh, they're doing a little dance. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the thistles. Some kind of thistle. And a bumblebee. Just joined us. Oh, another one. The bees like the thistles. I'm not too sure about the bees. It's a little gift shop on the left, and this is really pretty. You can just see the butterflies flying around, and huge, massive thistles like. I've never seen such huge thistles. Wow, that's like a real proper thistle. I've never seen real proper thistles before. Whoa, they are impressive thistles. I mean, I'm never going to look at a thistle in the same way ever again. Wow, okay. Staff only beyond this point. That means don't go there. Wow. That is a thistle. Whoa. It's a bit like a punk, you know? It's like a punk thistle. 
like thistles or like the punks of the of the plant world maybe like this is a pretty cool eh? yeah. okay let's leave the thistles Isn't this lovely? You can just walk into this garden. Garden guides. Oh, what's in here? Oh, it's a little box and you open it. And inside it, some little information cards. Cute's that? Priorwood Garden. Now this is the Priorwood Orchard and Woodland. It's believed that the white Melrose apple was first grown in the 1500s by the monks of Melrose Ab Abbey. The orchard is home to a wide range of other fruits such as plums, pears, greengages, damsons and medlars. A traditional but unusual fruit based eating when almost rotten. Nah, I don't fancy that. I mean, that sounds a bit rubbish. Never heard of a meddler. And look at this shot. You can just see the abbey from this corner of the garden. That's the abbey towering above. This is a little stall still in the private gardens. And it's like all the stuff that they grow here, like they've got huge green beans. I'm not sure if those are some kind of pea inside. I'm not a gardener, so I can't really tell if it's a bean or a kind of pea. Oh, it's a broad bean or a runner bean. I'm just looking at the list now. Beans are ten for a pound. Mm -hmm. Some apples, different varieties of apples. These in your local supermarket, do you? This is the entrance to the orchards. Again, we've been told not to pick any fruit off the trees. Apples. Apples galore. I don't know why we can't pick any. There's lots of them. Mmm, apples. You know when they said that the fall of man happened because Eve was tricked by an apple? Well, apparently it wasn't really an apple. It was a pomegranate. Don't know if that's true or not. But um 
Not sure I would be so impressed by an apple. And it's really lovely because um, you can just walk through the apples. They have little paths. I'm attracted by these flowers. This is when you start to feel like you're getting into the woods proper. Really lovely berries. Look at the colour. They look like pomegranate seeds. Wow. That is a fabulous looking berry. I think if I was a berry, I'd be that berry. You know you're getting into the woods when you can hear the rustling of little animals and birds in the bushes. Look, little white bench. Doesn't that look appetising? To go and sit on. Bet you it's manky and needs a good scrub. So we're just leaving the orchard now, but I thought I would show you these. These are a different kind of apple because they're red. I'm not sure if that means they're a completely different species. But they're certainly a different colour. They're very red. I thought they were plums at first, but they're not plums. I'm not allowed to touch them. Well, maybe I can touch them. No. They're definitely apples. The rest of them are green. Maybe it's just a position in the sun. I'm no expert. Because that one's green on that underside. But red on top. But that one's very red. For an apple. This is a very impressive tree. These apples are huge. Now, I've found myself in a public garden. There was a few dotted around Melrose, which was another reason I wanted to come here, not just for the abbey, but to see these pretty gardens. Luckily, at this time of day, everything's nice and quiet. This is a pretty garden. This is a greenhouse. And it's quite funny because some tourists have, um, obviously the younger age group, have um, written some things on the windows. You can see we have some 
apples, I think. Um, and it's really pretty, you can see, very quiet. It's really peaceful, pretty flowers. And bees, quite loud bees. Really pretty colours of these flowers. I mean, it takes a lot of work to keep a garden looking as pretty as this. I would be obsessed. I'd be deadheading everything. We have a greenhouse. Which is locked. statue inside, a Romanesque type statue. Oh, and you can see some pumpkins way up the back. Oh, another feather just flew past, brushed against my wrist. If you didn't see my previous video, You'll not know that when I was filming at the Abbey, a white feather fell down from nowhere. And I had to chase it, because that's what I do. I believe it's an angel saying hello. And I was holding it all the way around the Abbey Museum that I also filmed. And at one point I lost the feather, because it was in my fingers. I never even realised. So that was probably just saying hello again. Oh. I'm not noticed. At least they've got fig leaves covering their modesty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one of the lovely gardens. I think there's about at least two or three. Here are the graffiti markings. <laughs> Sydney, Australia, 2022. Hi. Eva has been here. These are quite cute actually. It's nothing obscene. Just their names. I don't think that one says Rolo is smelly. Mm -hmm. Hi from Italy. RFC is the best. Never. Okay. <laughs> so, we're just about to leave this garden now. I on Thel smells bad. <laughs> okay. I feel bad for I on Thel and Rolo. They were probably um, arch enemies on the same bus trip. Poor souls. Okay. And you can still see the abbey from where I am, just to get the context of the distance. Okay, so here we are at Melrose Abbey in Melrose in the Scottish Borders. And we're just going to have a wee wander and a wee sweep. There's quite a few people around. But here we have the abbey is actually closed at the moment, so we can't go into it itself. But we can still see. The beauty of this old ruin, which at one time worshipped God. Uh, well, the people did at least. 
Oh. <laughs> We're going to go and find the museum. This is just giving you the history of the church, what it would have looked like when it was active as a church. The church was the religious heart of the monks' community. It proclaimed the glory of God, the wealth of the monastery and the skill of the craftsmen. It tells you a bit about the monks, the white monks, the lay brothers, and there's a cheeky ant crawling around as well. Thankfully, not on me. At least I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. This one is in front of the part of, well, the abbey that's all shut off to the public just now because of the renovations that they're doing. But this one is telling you all about. Look at this white feather, white feather, white feather. That means an angel. That just came out of nowhere, floated past me. Oh wow, thank you Jesus. Um, okay, I'll add that to my collection. I get that quite a lot. Okay. So this is telling you all about the, well, actually, maybe about St. Peter. Replica statues of St. Peter and St. Paul. Keeper of the gates of heaven was St. Peter. And St. Paul, of course, was the great evangelist. Oh, that's me. I don't press that. And this one is telling us all about the royal connections to the abbey. Robert instructed that his heart be buried here. That says Robert the Bruce, because this is where people believe that Robert the Bruce's heart was buried. And this is just to let us know what they're doing, why it's all shut off to us. They're carrying out high level survey. Now we're going to go and find the museum because it's near closing time. But before we go to the museum, I'm just going to do a sweep of this uh, area just beside the abbey, which really is stunning with the backdrop of the hills. It's a lovely place, just to visit on its own. Very calm and peaceful actually. And this is at, us at the Melrose Abbey Museum. So it's going up the stairs in the museum. This was once in the Abbey Church. Interesting. I feel quite drawn to this piece of stone. We have got some very interesting sculptures on the wall, which of course do you know all sorts of interesting things. Maybe the ones been in the Abbey.
and there's a sign on the wall telling us what they all are. Obviously there's quite a lot to go through so I'm not going to have time to do that. This one is carving off a fabulous monster called a Tarask. Legend tells how St. Martha tamed the beast with hymns and prayers. Hmm. Oh, I think that's his face. Although it's quite hard to tell with these old stones. At first I thought that was its face. That would be really scary. <laughs> Such a cute wee museum. These stairs are so squeaky. Wow. Thankfully, everyone's gone from this bit, so we can explore it in peace. Wow. These are impressive. You're not allowed to touch these ones. Okay, so we have on the far left, Virgin and Child. Second left, St. Paul. Second right, St. Andrew. And far right, St. Peter. I love these. St. Peter, how do you do? St. Andrew, I'm not sure about you. St. Paul, fly away Peter. And Virgin Mary, how do you do? Jesus is minus his head, which is unfortunate. These are, oh, they're beautiful in there. Strange, faceless, bleakness. They have got a, a presence to them which moves me somehow. And we have these cross shaped stones here. These ones form keystones at the tops of vaults in the Abbey's domestic buildings. And it talks about the masons that built them. This is a reconstructed window. The monks probably had windows like this. Okay, so I'm going to move through to the next section now. We have a lovely little room here that's white and it's very echoey. The collection of maps of the UK, and this seems to be the Roman part of the museum. All these remnants, fragments of Roman architecture, little bits of Roman glass, and jars, plates, bowls. And it shows you a timeline of Roman rule in Scotland. I don't think that lasted for very long though. I mean, the old saying goes, doesn't it? The Romans could not conquer Scotland. You know. There's a reason for that. Which I think the Scots are quite proud of. And that's a bit feisty, 
aren't they? Let's be honest. The squats were a feisty lot. When it suits us. Such a cute little window. And I think because it's the end of the day, I think we can't really go to the to the left. So we're probably gonna to have to exit now. But I like this room. It's got a lovely atmosphere about it. Calm. We've come into the next room actually. Here is of course a Walter Scott. Because the borders are synonymous with Sir, Wal Sir Walter. I'm not sure what this is, some kind of hanging chain. This looks like it would have been maybe an old kitchen. And here we have a collection of really interesting dolls which I don't really have time to study in any great depth. But this one is Mr. Abbott Binning. He was elected Abbott in 1394. But to be honest, I'm quite more interested in the handsome guy up here who's a stonemason. Oh, he's quite fit, eh? As far as a, like, Ancient remnants of stonemasons go. He is quite fit. Loving the shoes. Sexy stuff. Is he wearing jeans? Kind of looks like he's wearing like jeans and a denim jacket. How cute is that? This guy though. Mm, not really my type. And uh, definitely not new. Oh, David. Well, that was a little visit to the Abbey, sorry, the museum at Melrose Abbey. Hope you enjoyed that little insight. It's a beautiful place.